Okay, let's talk about this particular rule that confuses so many students when they're learning algebra. Okay, and this is the rule. It's a to uh, a to the negative n power is equal to one over a to the n. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to certainly explain this. And if you're learning algebra, you definitely want to stick around for this video because this just over years of teaching math, you know, when students first are introduced to this particular uh, rule, it can be confusing. I'm sure I was confused decades ago. So we want to you know, avoid those sad faces and turn them into happy faces by really getting to know this rule, um, you know, well, okay, uh, the first time. So this is part of other, a uh, broader set of rules. I'm going to get to all of this in a second, but first let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most powerful online robust video programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that, and you can find a, um, a link to my math help program in the description of this video, but that would include full math courses uh, and assistance with, if you're taking a current math course, my program can help you out, okay? So it offers full, complete uh, lessons, much more detailed and comprehensive than what I do on YouTube, and I literally show you how to solve thousands of the most common problems that you're going to encounter in a math course. Okay, uh, one thing that I want to stress, uh, because I'm assuming you are learning math if you're watching this video, is the importance of taking math notes. Over decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me, those students that um, uh, take great math notes almost always have great math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who have sloppy notes, inconsistent notes, no notes, you get the idea, um, often will struggle in mathematics. So you got to improve on your note taking if, you, if you're you know, not where you need to be. Most students uh, have room for improvement. Um, some students really need to kind of um, you know, pick it up in, ter in terms of note taking. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer very detailed, comprehensive uh, notes uh, those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find a link to those in the description of this video. But um, with that being said, let's get into this rule. And it would be, you know, uh, interesting, you know, if I could ask you, hey, do you recognize what this rule is? Okay. And in mathematics, when we look at a rule, it's like we got to interpret what it's saying. Well, this rule happens to be part of a larger set of rules that have to do with powers and exponents. So, for example, like 2 cubed times 2 to the 7th, we have uh, two powers here, right? We're trying to multiply two powers. So this uh, power, okay, is defined as this little base. That's the big number down here. And this little number up here is called the exponent, okay? So like 2 cubed, we can say uh, A is the base and N is the exponent, and then here I have a different, uh, the same base, right? Because this is two and this is two, so this might be a, but we have a different exponent up here, so maybe we'll call that m. Okay. So when we're looking at general rules of powers and exponents, this is kind of what they represent. But working with powers and exponents is very critical to your success in algebra and uh, more advanced mathematics. Okay. So here are the power and exponent rules. So if we're trying to multiply two powers with the same base, you have this rule, a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the uh, m plus n. So for example, uh, x squared times x, whoops, that's a y and x cubed. The bases are the same, so we can add the exponents. So this would be x to the 2 plus 3 or x to the fifth power. Okay, so that's an illustration of that rule. Then we have uh, the quotient rule. So when we're dividing powers, okay, with the same base, uh, a to the m divided by a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n. And then here is our uh, rule that we're going to be exploring here. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. And then a to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1, okay? Very interesting rule. So I like to always kind of uh, trick students if I go uh, x squared plus y z to the zero. That looks very fancy, right? They're like, uh, like, what is this equal to? Well, it's just one, okay? Any base to the zero uh, exponent is equal to one. All right, so that is a super easy 
uh, rule to remember. But when students are learning these uh, rules, these ones go uh, pretty well. Uh, students sometimes struggle with this rule uh, here, the division rule. But this rule uh, seems to confuse a lot of students and, uh, you know, initially, okay, a lot of students will overcome that confusion because the way I teach it will kind of clear things up. So let's get into this particular rule, negative exponents here. And the best way to um, get into it is to see how it works. All right, so here's the rule. It states that if we have a base to a negative exponent, we can write it as one over that uh, same power, but obviously the signs become different. Okay, so let's Let's go ahead and apply it here. So if I have two to the negative third power, that is equal to one over two cubed, okay? So this is negative up here, this is positive. So this becomes the opposite sign. So if this is negative here, negative, this becomes positive, but it's one over that power, okay? So we're just following the pattern here. And hopefully this was not too difficult to apply. Okay, so most, for the most part, when we uh, see uh, this rule in action, it's not too difficult, but I'll show you where students start getting confused here in a second. Let's go ahead and practice this rule here again with this uh, problem, uh, so or this example. So we have x to the negative, negative sign of the power. What do you think this is equal to when we're looking at this rule? Yes, you guessed it, 1 over x to the positive 7th. Okay, now... The reverse is true. If I gave you this right here, one over two cubed, now it might be not, it's not intuitive that this uh, rule runs backwards, okay? This is also equal to this. So one over two cubed would be equal to two to the negative third power, or one over x to the seventh is equal to x to the negative seventh power. So these properties and stuff, these laws don't run in just one direction. Okay, they run in both directions. Okay. All right. So hopefully not too difficult. Uh, let's go ahead and continue to practice this. And now here is where it starts to get interesting. Okay. So what if I have one over three to the negative third power? Well, uh, let me go and raise this. Now again, if I have three 3 to the, I'm sorry, 1 over 3 to the negative 2 power. Yes, if I have 1, if I have 3 over, or 3 to the negative 2 power just by itself, okay, not in a denominator or a fraction, I know that's going to be 1 over 3 squared. Okay, so I think at that, this point in time, we're pretty uh, settled on that. So I'm like, well, how is this going to look then? Well, we got to write this, and it's going to be a complex fraction. So this is going to be 1 over this three to the negative two, okay, is equal to one over three squared. So this is gonna be one over three squared, okay? And this is where the confusion comes in with students. They're like, oh boy, there's a lot of like, you know, complicated complex fraction stuff. So now how do I simplify this? Well, this means what? This is one, okay? This is division, right? This little bar here, one divided by, 1 over 3 squared, okay? So if we just kind of look at this, this is 1 divided by 1 over 3 squared. Okay, so let's write it that way. And now I can just go ahead and simplify. It's 1 divided by 1 over 3 squared. It's the same thing as 1 times, remember I got to flip this when I'm talking about fractions, 3 squared over 1, which is the same thing as just 1 times 3 squared or three squared, okay? So you see how I got there? So this here, let's write it here, one over three to the negative two, uh, turned out to be equal to three squared, okay, or three squared over one if we like, okay? Now, here is what I want to uh, 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 help you with, okay? this You do not have to go through all of this here to get to this conclusion, that one over three to the negative two power is equal to three squared, okay? That's what it's equal to, but there's an easier way to think about this rule. So let's get rid of all this complex fraction confusion, and I'm going to now explain this rule to you, okay? Here's the deal. I have one over three to the negative two power, okay? 
if I want to make this exponent, if I want to make it positive, or if I want to move it uh, to the opposite side of the fraction bar, when I do that, it becomes whatever sign this is, it becomes opposite. This becomes 3 squared over 1 or 3 squared. That's the rule, okay? So let's just kind of look at some more examples of this, okay? So whatever power you have, okay, when you move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, okay, the sign of the exponent will change. We're going to do a few little examples here so you can really... Um, you know, understand it. So I have 1 over x to the negative fifth. So how can we rewrite that? Well, I could put this x to the negative fifth, this whole thing. I could just move it up to the numerator. But when I do that, okay, the sign of the exponent changes. So that's going to become x to a positive 5. It's negative 5 down here. So I have to change the sign of the exponent, and that's it. So that's x to the fifth over 1, because we are talking about a fraction or just x to the fifth, okay? Now, let's go ahead and uh, look at this this way. What if I had 1 over x cubed, okay? 1 over x cubed. How can I write that? Well, okay, again, this is like our rule, or uh, the standard rule. If I wanted to move this up in the numerator, I can move it up, okay, move this power up, but the, the sign changes, okay? So if this is positive, it becomes negative like so, okay? Kind of get the idea here. So that's what you have to remember is that when you move, you can move a power, okay? So in, in a fraction, you can move a power uh, to whatever side of the fraction bar you want. So we have a numerator and we have a denominator. So all these terms, whatever you have up here, we can move uh, whatever's up here, whatever's up here, we can move it up to the numerator. We can move this down to the dom denominator. We can keep we can move, let's say I have a bunch of stuff up here and a bunch of stuff down here. I could do all, I could shuffle things around, no problem with this rule. I can say, hmm, yeah, I'm going to put everything in a denominator. Okay, I'll keep this in a denominator, and I'll move these guys down there, and then I'll have a new expression. So you got a, a wide range of latitude with this rule. So let's kind of mess around with it now. Um, let's go ahead and move this guy downstairs to the denominator. Okay, no problem. So when I do this, okay, when I move this uh, numerator, this power that's in the numerator, when I move it down, there's not going to be anything there. When when you when there's nothing left, there's always a one. Okay. Now when I move this down, this is y to the negative six. I can put this down in the denominator. That negative power now becomes the opposite of whatever this sign is, right? So this is negative down in the numerator. Sorry, negative in the numerator. It's positive in the denominator. Okay, and we'll write that next to this guy because I didn't move this guy. This y to negative two. Okay, so no problem. I could I could rewrite this expression here in this manner. Okay, but we can you know that's not our always our only choice. Okay, what else could we do? All right, we'll just keep that one up as a reference. So y to the negative six over y to the negative two. Let's say I wanted to, for whatever purposes, and, and uh, you'll see when you start simplifying powers, let's say I wanted to move this guy up to the numerator, all right? No, no problem, okay? So we'll keep our y to the negative 6, and then we're going to move our y to the negative 2 up to the numerator. So in the denominator, there's not going to be anything left but a 1. But when I write my y to the negative 2, it was negative uh, in the denominator, so it becomes positive in the numerator. Just what are, it, the sign changes. If it's negative here, it's going to be positive there. Okay, so this is another way. This expression here is equivalent to this, and it's equivalent to this. Okay, and so you have a, a lot of latitude here with this particular rule. Now, if you remember, we have a division rule. A to the m over a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n. That's a handy rule um, as well, okay, because we're talking about division of powers here. So you're going to find out that you can handle certain uh, situations by using the quotient rule or by just moving things that have the same base next to one another and simplifying. Because remember, we, we're talking about multiplication here. Let's go ahead and just do something here real quick. 
Remember we have this rule, a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. So if we have the same bases, we could just add the exponents. So like for example, this one here, this is multiplication. So this is the multiplication rule. This is multiplication, y to the 6 times y to the negative 2. Bases are the same, okay? So I can just add the exponents. So that's going to be y plus 6 plus a negative 2, which is equal to 1 over y to the fourth power, okay? Now, I will uh, say uh, one last thing here, that when you're simplifying um, expressions with powers and exponents, we typically want to leave our answers in positive exponents, okay? So you don't want to leave your final answers with negative exponents. But I'm kind of going a little bit too much. Uh, I'm getting a little bit overly excited about these power and exponent rules in this video. Um, but I wanted to tie in you know, how these other rules, you know, apply. There's not just, there's many different ways, approaches we can uh, use these particular rules, but this one here is a super, like, powerful one, okay? Uh, but it tends to confuse students, and hopefully you are no longer confused about this, and if you, um, you know, weren't familiar about this, now you know, hey, you know how it works, and you're going to save yourself some frustration, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so if you like this video in some way, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully uh, you will subscribe. Okay, if you like my teaching style, I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel organized in various playlists. They're there for you. Obviously, I love to teach math, so I'm producing new content all the time, basic uh, to middle and high school mathematics to more advanced mathematics. Okay, but my best resources, you can find them in uh, just by following the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.